building went down the corridor and looked in the multi-purpose room. It was on the floor. I looked to the right, to the south, in the fellowship hall that was not supposed to be open today. People are sitting there. committed and effective national leaders, but also a friend. Now, many of us feel we know him because we all believe he's one of us. That's because he has waged battles on our behalf and championed causes that have protected the rights of individuals and has benefited all of us. You know, he was praised by President Barack Obama as a voice of the voiceless and a champion for the downtrodden. By definition and action, the Reverend Al Sharpton is a transformational leader, a man who has challenged the American social and political establishment on behalf of all people, regardless of race, gender, social economic status or belief. Indeed, a, a few leaders or political figures in recent years have worked harder than Reverend Sharpton. And his grasp of the issues and unmatchable oratorical skills have served him well as a platform for making positive change in America. Mm -hmm. Now, many of you may not know this, but he began his ministry at the age of four preaching his first sermon at the Washington Temple Church of God in Christ in Brooklyn. Now, just five years later, the Washington Temple Church legendary bishop, F.B. Washington, licensed Al Sharpton, his protege, as a Pentecostal minister. Now, we know he has done a lot in the civil rights movement, but what we may not know is that at the age of 13, Reverends Jesse Jackson and William Jones appointed Sharpton Youth Director of New York's SCLC Operation Breadbasket. And at 16, Sharpton founded a national youth movement, which he organized people around the country to push for increased voter registration, cultural awareness, and job training programs. Now, there's a lot has, uh, that Reverend Sharpton has done, and I'm not going to go through all of it because you guys know him, but uh, let me just say a few more things before I close and bring them up. Last October, the New York Magazine featured him as the only African-American listed among the top 12 most powerful people in New York City. Recently, Ebony Magazine named him as one of the most powerful and influential African-Americans in the United States. And there was a U.S. Today Gallup poll conducted in July of uh, 2008 called Reverend Sharpton, the leader African-Americans turn to to speak on their behalf, second only to then Senator Barack Obama. Now we all know he's the founder of the National Action Network, a nonprofit organization out of New York. He has 45 chapters around the country, but he has frequently said his religious convictions are the basis for his life. And that's why on most Sundays, and we're so pleased he's here at Friendly, you'll find him preaching to congregations across the nation. Now, whether he's speaking from the pulpit of the stage, you can believe what you see, and you can believe what you hear. Friendly, please join me in giving a loving welcome to our guest speaker, a man who fights every day for fairness, justice, and equality, a man who's proven himself a worthy inheritor of the legacy of Dr. King, a true leader, my friend, a leader for today and tomorrow, Reverend Al Sharpton.
First, giving honor to God, our pastor, Dr. Jones, and all of the members of the clergy, and all of you that gather at this hour to worship God in spirit and in truth. First, I thank God for another day. A day we neither earned nor deserved. A lot of folk get up in the morning like God owed them another day. <laughs> or like they had done something to earn another day. But I don't care how saved you are. I don't care how holy you look to us. All of us have done enough wrong. That any night we sleep, if God just checked the record, none of us would see the next moment. So every day is a gift from God. A lot of folk travel with me, Reverend Jones, always checking the weather. I don't rarely, I rarely check the weather. Because every day is a good day to me. Could be a good cold day, good hot day, good rainy day, good dry day, good windy day, good calm day, no matter to me. Every day above ground is a good day. But every day I get up, I realize that somehow while I slept, a divine decision was made to look beyond my faults and supply my needs. If it had been left up to my enemies, I wouldn't have got up this morning. But I'm glad he reserved that decision all to himself. That's why I try to do something every day to show God that I'm grateful. That's right, sir. And he gave me what he didn't owe me. But he gave it to me anyhow. You don't have to be here at Friend of Temple and Sunday if I spent the morning with your pastor and walking around this compound and even seeing the new sanctuary. Certainly you can be proud of being part of one of the most progressive and visionary ministries in America today. But a good 
good tree bringeth good fruit. And if you're a good tree, you don't have to tell folks you're good. If they taste the fruit, they'll know the fruit. Anytime you go to church and they've got to explain everything, then there ain't much there. And a lot of us have lost the vision of what God would want us to do. But I walked around and saw what he's doing and what he's doing in the community and the young people. Very few churches can draw young people and men. And what I like about it is because this is where young people need to come. A lot of us act like we can judge people. Like we always was right. A lot of y'all did everything you could. Then come join the church. <laughs> Jump up the next Sunday, start saying things I used to do. I don't do no more. For most of your things you used to do, you can't do no more. I'm going to learn how to go on home and, and be a, a husband at home. I ain't been 
like that all, most of my life. He said, I'm going to learn after 41 years how to stay home. I said, no. I said, you said Mr. Brown told you to take care of me. You keep your badge back. You stay out here and take care of me like I used to take care of him. And he's traveled with me ever since that last funeral. He's with me today, Brother Charles Bob. Now, he don't look like his sister Fur, but he's 80 years old. And run up down the road, won't let me carry a bag or nothing. We go to the airport, I bring a bag, he make me let it go, and just like he was doing Mr. Brown, so I just walk around up in my hand, try to act like Murphy Jones or somebody. Like that. <laughs> St. John 5 reads, after this there was a feast of the Jews. Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now there is at Jerusalem by the sheep mark, a pool, which is called in the Hebrew tongue Bethesda, which had an infirmity 30 and 8 years. He said unto him, it's time to get up. Last night at the school kicking off Martin Luther King week, I talked a little about how much it bothers me that many of us in the black community have succumbed to some of the worst behavior. It's bad when people hold us down. It's worse when we act like that's where we're supposed to be. I go to colleges to speak, and young blacks that are trying to get educated and ahead in life are told that they get an education and speak eloquently to act in white. Well, the reverse of that means if you act in ignorant and stupid and can't speak, that's supposed to be black. psychology of telling children that being a thug and being a hoodlum is synonymous with blackness and that if they try to do well for themselves that they're selling out then you don't have to worry about others holding you back because you ain't going nowhere you stay within the boundaries of your own expectations We have developed a crippling submission to what is bad and what is not productive. I remember not long ago, a friend of mine came to me with a record executive who was in trouble and going to court in Brooklyn, New York. Black brother who had changed his name to God. And he was on trial, suspected of some kind of murder cases, and he wanted me to help him out. I said, well, first of all, what's the name of your company? He said, Murder Inc. <laughs> you want to defend yourself against a homicide, but you call your own company Murder Inc. Then you change your name to God, not God. Not King, not Malcolm, God. Now let me ask you a question, sir. How do you look standing up in federal court defending yourself as God and got it upstairs trying to prove he ain't God? I mean, God ain't even trying to be God in your head. You trying to be a gangster and the gangsters trying to prove they're not gangsters. Some of the rappers 
Americans, and I told them, y'all got to do better. Y'all can't just talk down to our people. We got to lift them up. I remember the last conversation I had with James Brown. He said to me, Reverend, what happened to us? He said, Rita had us singing respect. I had y'all singing, y'all was black and proud. How do we go from respect and black and proud to niggas with an attitude? said to me, well, you understand, brother. You said it's just rough out here. We just reflect what's there. Don't blame us. We just show the hood we see. We like a mirror. We just show what we see. I said, well, that's a funny thing to me. Said, what do you mean? I said, I use a mirror every morning. <laughs> Where am I at? I get up, go in the bathroom, look in the mirror. Hair all over my head, sleep around my eyes, slob around my mouth. I don't walk outside like that talking about I'm going to keep it real. <laughs> mirrors are not only to reflect what you see, mirrors are to correct what you see. It's all right. Effort is when you're down and be determined to get up no matter what. <laughs> Your grandmother and great grandmother, who had none of what you had, couldn't figure out how to get up. What's wrong with you? Other than you lost your will and lost your desire. That's why the Bible said the world would get weak and wise. We know more and got less. That's right. I walked around Reverend Jones this morning. Grandfather started this church. Yeah. Folks left the community. They bought up all the land. Remind me of what a lot of us doing. I got relatives down in Alabama. One of them got a master's degree, Johnny, in business. Everywhere he ever lived, got his dick. <laughs> But she had enough sense to buy property and still here. You sit there with all this knowledge and nothing to show for. Just down. Friends down. Relationships down. It ain't just racial as pressure. A lot of y'all sitting here today in the same rut you've been in for years. And just go He was laying by the pool of Bethesda. Why was he been laying there for 38 long years? Why was he laying there? Well, he, he was sick. He was impotent. But he made the same mistakes that you make and I make. First thing is he was hanging around the wrong crowd. Well, what, what, what do you mean, Shocker? Well, they said he was laying around the pool of impotent folk. Now what do impotent folk lay around talking about? All they can do is exchange impotent stories. That's something wrong with y'all now. Y'all hang around folk that confirm your being that. Oh, my hip hurt. He said, I know what you mean, 
He ain't never felt that when it was the controls in his hand. I don't want to be there. What am I getting there? A lot of y'all like friends that are clean and pristine and have polished backgrounds and the right resume and ain't never made a mistake and ain't never failed and ain't never had a bad experience. I don't want no friends like that. People meet you talking about, I ain't never been in trouble. I ain't never had a bad experience. I ain't never had a bad relationship. My record is clean. But don't hang out with me. If you that clean, I don't know about you. Because we may hit a storm, and I don't know how you will act on the storm. Don't worry about what you may have done. 